So this is video number six. Um, it's the last regular video for chapter three um, that comes right from the book. It goes with section 3.5, pages 108 to 113. So look there if you want more examples or are looking for a little bit more explanation or help. So in this section, we're gonna solve two-step equations with any operation. So instead of just one operation that we have to cancel out, now there's gonna be two steps before we get the variable by itself. So. When we do these, we are still going to follow all these seven rules that we had before. Still going to show our work the same way. Um, so draw the line down the equal sign, write down every step, cross out what cancels, only work straight down, don't go across and don't let things flip flop what side of the equal sign, or sorry, what side of that line that they're on. So if X is on this side, X stays on this side the whole time. Rewrite the problem after every step. So now these are going to take a little bit more work because there's going to be one more step before you get X by itself. And then check your answer and circle it when you're done. So let me do, we'll do a couple examples together. Um, we're still doing PEMDAS in reverse order. Because we're working backwards to solve for the variable, we are starting with adding and subtracting and going through order of operations this way. So if you hear me say it in class, I say PEMDAS backwards, I just call it SADMAP. So that means do it in the reverse order from order of operations. So that means we are going to undo adding and subtracting first, starting here, and then undo any multiplication and division next. So draw my line. I need to find the variable. It is right here in yellow. So that's what I'm trying to get alone by itself. Undo adding and subtracting first. Well, here I see plus 11. So to undo that, the inverse operation would be minus 11 or subtract 11 from both sides. Cross out what cancels, bring everything down. Negative 4 minus 11 takes me to negative 15. Now I'm on to the second step in my two-step equation. Undo any multiplication or division. Well, these are being multiplied together, 3 times x. So divide by 3. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. Cross out what cancels, bring everything down. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. So let's check it. If I plug that negative 5 right back in there, 3 times negative 5, I'm just going to work it out in my head, that would be negative 15 plus 11 does make negative 4. So I know it's right. So there's one example. Let's talk through one more. So again, undo adding and subtracting first. Kind of doesn't fit on there, sorry. Undo adding and subtracting first, then multiplying and dividing. So draw your line. This one's up here because it has a little trick. If you look at this side, some people get confused. Just do that, simplify it. Two minus 10, oh, well that's just negative eight. So I can rewrite the problem so that it looks a little bit simpler, but it doesn't change the way I actually solve it. So undo adding and subtracting first. Well, here, let's find our variable. This is what we're trying to get by itself. I can tell right now that I am putting a negative five with it right here. So the inverse of that, sorry, I don't want that to look like division. So the inverse of that is to add five. That will cancel out the negative five. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Actually cross out what cancels. X divided by four is what's left here. And then on the right-hand side, negative eight plus five makes negative three. Now I'm ready to undo this. I have division by four. So the inverse of that would be to multiply by four. So show it right off to the side like that. Multiply both sides by four, cross out what cancels. And X is equal to, well, negative three times four, negative 12. Now I just have to check it, plug it back in and check it. So plug in negative 12 there. Let's see if I put negative 12 in. This whole thing would give me negative 12 divided by 4 would give me negative 3. And negative 5 plus negative 3 does make what we said right here, negative 8. So I checked it and I know it's right. Okay. So when you're working with two-step equations, could it be where you get a negative answer? Um, yes, that could happen. We might get negatives. Could we get zero for an answer? Yup. How about a decimal possibly for an answer? That could also happen. Let's say, sure. 
And could you get a fraction for an answer? Yep. All of these are possible. Could you get a mixed number? Yeah. So I just want you to know, just because you get a decimal or a fraction or a negative or something doesn't mean you did it wrong. Just double check yourself. You can always plug it back in and double check. It also means that maybe some of these we might start to use calculators if they don't work out nice. But try it first. Most of them should still give you pretty answers. Okay, I'm going to go and do one more together and then I'll let you finish the next few as practice. So, draw my line down the equal sign. Find the variable that I want to get by itself. And then look and find if there's any adding and subtracting I need to get rid of. In this case, there is. I have to get rid of this 11. So I'm going to do minus 11 to cancel out the positive 11. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Cross out what cancels. Bring everything down. Now notice that that negative right there has to be brought down with it. It's glued to the negative 6x. So that all comes down. Negative 13 minus 11 combines to make negative 24. All right, next step, I see multiplication here between the negative 6 and the x, so I would need to divide, let's move that out of the way, divide by negative 6, whatever I do on one side I have to do on the other, cross out what cancels, and bring it down, x is equal to, well, 20, negative 24 divided by negative 6 is positive 4. So let's plug that back in and check it. If I put 4 in there, Let's see, I would be doing negative 6 times 4, or 11 minus 24, and that does equal negative 13. So I checked it. I know it's right. Okay, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five more practice problems that you can do. Make sure you show all the steps. Okay, cancel out adding and subtracting first. That's your sad map. Adding and subtracting get canceled out first. Then cancel out multiplication and division next. And then I don't think we'll see any in this section with exponents or parentheses. That'll be later on. Okay, so try the next five, and then we'll talk through and come back and check them together. Okay, let's talk about number two here. In this one... Um, I had to get rid of the 5 first, so plus 5, I canceled it out with minus 5 on both sides, rewrote it. Now, this negative is still here on the left side, negative x divided by 3. In order to get rid of that all at the same time, remember that we could say this is the same as this, both the same thing. So I want to get rid of that negative 3, so that's why I showed multiplying by negative 3 off to the side. So that way, the negative 3 all cancels with that negative 3. So I did the same thing on this side, multiply by negative 3, and that gave me 21. Then check it, and we're good. All right, so try these next four. Stop, pause, make sure you show all your work, make sure you go back and plug it in and check it, and then we'll um, go over it together. So in the first one, I had to get rid of the plus 13 on both sides first. That gave me negative, we're right here, negative 5x equals 20. Divide by negative 5 on both sides, and then I got x is equal to negative 4. Make sure you plug it back in here. So plug it back in, check, and make sure it works. The next one, I had to get rid of the 13 first. So right here, I did minus 13 from both sides. Um, I didn't cross everything out here just so you can still read my writing and, and follow everything. But then bring it all down. I do still have a negative right here, so I had to cancel it out with a negative 4, which I did on both sides, and that gives me 48. Now, the next two, uh, if you didn't notice, are the same as ones we just did on the last slide. So you should have gotten the same answers. Maybe you noticed and didn't uh, repeat them. But if you did them again, there's the answers. So I just want to talk through some um, common mistakes that people make. So there's not anything to fill in right now, but just listen and make sure you don't make these same mistakes. A lot of people right here, they don't really think about what the inverse is, and they just say, oh, start with the 7. Let me add 7 to both sides. Well, no, 7 plus 7 doesn't cancel out. That makes 14. This doesn't help you. Make sure you're doing the inverse, so subtracting 7. Here in the next one, they just started over here on the left, and they did this part first. That would cancel out the 2, but that's not the order that we do it in. We have to work backwards, so cancel out adding and subtracting first, then multiplying and dividing. So remember, we have to go in this order when we're working backwards to solve for a variable. 
in the next one. Uh, it looks like they did the right thing here. They canceled out the nines, did that on both sides, cool. But then they look on the next step and they say, oh, a positive five, I'll cancel that out with a negative five. That'll work. No, you have to look at the operation. These two things right here are being multiplied together. To undo multiplication, you need to divide by a five and just a positive five. So I should have divided both sides by a positive five in that case. Okay, and then the last one. Um, this was one of our special cases. If you're canceling out a fraction, you don't use the negative. This does not cancel out with that three-fourths. That does you no good. It's not the inverse. The inverse of multiplying by three-fourths is to multiply by four-thirds. Now, multiplying by four and dividing by four, multiplying by three and dividing by three, that all cancels out. The way they have it here, you just get a big, ugly, negative thing. So make sure you do it this way with the reciprocal. Now sometimes you'll see some equations like this. Take a look at 7, 8, and this one, we'll call it number 9, and see if you notice anything. Well, for each of these, there's actually some simplifying that I need to do first. So don't get confused, don't be thrown off, you're still going to solve it the same way and get the variable by itself. It's just like in number 7, if you notice, well hey, I have 4 and 3 here on this side. So just put them together. This is really negative 2y plus 7. And then I'm ready to solve it like a regular two-step equation. Or this one, I have x's and more x's all on the same side. So just combine them first. 7x minus 10x makes negative 3x equals 15. Now it's just a one-step equation, okay? So finish working out these two that we just did, and then you can also simplify and solve number nine. So go ahead, pause it, and then this is our last uh, bit to come back and check these when you're done. Okay, here's what I got. I finished working them out, um, so you can check with my answers. Be sure that you're in the habit of actually taking this and plugging it back in. On any test or quiz, you should be able to check and make sure that your answers are correct because you know how to do this. And, and if you get an answer and plug it in and it doesn't seem to work out right, go back and try to find your mistake. So this is the end of video six for chapter five.